In this video, we're going to take a look at uh, formatting numbers in Excel 2016. I've got a simple spreadsheet here with a real simple budget with a few categories and uh, three months and then some totals and some percents over here. And right now, the numbers are not really formatted at all. If I select all of them and look up here in the number group, which is where you find formatting information for numbers, uh, you'll see that general is what's used and general is the default. It, uh, basically does very little formatting, doesn't put in commas or a specific number of decimal places or anything like that. So uh, we are going to start off with uh, the first row and the last row here. And frequently when you're dealing with uh, rows and columns of dollars like this, you at least put a dollar sign on the first row and typically a dollar sign on the last row and not on the numbers in between. So we're going to go up here and we're going to tell Excel that we want to put a dollar sign there. Uh, we've got a bunch of other choices, but the default here uh, is the last one that you choose. And I've been using dollar sign because I'm in the United States. So I'm going to click on dollar sign here and we'll see what happens. We get a dollar sign. We get two decimal places in every number and numbers that are a thousand or bigger have a comma. So it does all three of those things. Plus it does one more thing that's a little more subtle. The number is pushed to the left just a little bit here. If you compare the number on the first row and the last row with the two numbers in between, you'll see that the 500 and the 225 here go a little bit closer to the edge of the cell than these numbers do. So now the numbers don't really line up very well and that doesn't look too good. So uh, before we uh, go on and format these other two rows of numbers here, what we're going to do is we're going to decrease the decimals on this because we really don't care about pennies when we're talking about numbers that are in the hundreds or thousands. So we are going to go, we've got these two options up here. We can increase the number of decimal places. I'll try that a couple of times. And notice how Excel does make the column a little bit wider for you when you do that. And I definitely don't want four decimal places. So I'm going to use the other one here, decrease. And I'm going to press on that four times to get rid of all four decimal places. So I'm dealing just with whole numbers. And you'll notice, even though it made the cells bigger, when I added decimal places, when I decreased decimal places, it does not make them any smaller, at least in the same size. Okay, now let's take a look at these numbers in the middle here. And the only real problem we have with the numbers in the middle uh, is they don't quite line up the columns. These are pushed a little closer to the right edge of the cell. And there's also no comma here. We don't want dollars, but we do want uh, the numbers to be aligned the same. And we do want a comma there. And that's what this button will do for us right here. So if you click on the comma style, it will put in a comma in any numbers that are a thousand or more, and it will increase the number of decimals to two places. And again, we want to match these up with the numbers up here. So I'm going to decrease the decimal places twice. And now they look like the ones above. The only difference is they don't have a dollar sign. Uh, also notice that these numbers in the gray that are selected here are no longer pushed right up against the right edge of the cell. They are now lined up perfectly with the numbers that have dollar signs in them as well. Okay, we've got some numbers over here. You see I've got some formulas here dividing this number by the total. And so I've got some long decimal places here. And again, these are all general format, so it displays as much as it wants to. Um, not and we haven't told it what to display, so uh, this is what we get. So we don't want general, we want percent here, and if you click on the percent sign up here, uh, it will convert those numbers into percents. And uh, it gives them whole numbers. Really all it's doing is displaying uh, the first two decimal places and removing the decimal point and putting a percent sign on the right. There is one interesting thing here, and that is that if you add these numbers up, uh, 9 and 8 is 17 here, and then 4 is 21. Let's put down a 1, carry the 2, and 2 and 2 and 4 and 2 is 10, so I get 101%. Well, it's not really 101%. Uh, these numbers are rounded, and if I, you'll see what's going on here, if I increase the number of decimal places here a few times, and now if you add the numbers up, you do get 100%. But it's rounding this one. It's just a little over 27.5, and, and that gets rounded up to 28. This is a little over 48, so it gets rounded up to 49. And this is over tw a little over half of uh, 23, so it gets rounded up to 24. And so everything, every single one of these gets rounded up, and so it gets displayed uh, down here, still 100%. 
but it looks like it ought to add up to 101 percent and uh, Excel is actually doing everything correctly uh, it's still getting this total when it adds them up but the numbers that you get up here because of the way it does the rounding are not going to look quite right so it kind of sometimes it looks like Excel made a mistake when it really didn't it's just uh, um, basically a side effect of the number of decimal places that you have displayed there's another way to access all of these things uh, up here still in the number group is uh, a down arrow and we've got general which is basically you know no formatting uh, we've got uh, number here let's uh, click on number here for our percent so basically that just gives you two decimal places and let's uh, undo that and go back to where we were before we've got currency and currency and accounting look pretty much the same and they are pretty much the same with one difference watch what happens when I click on currency here uh, for the percents and you see it puts a dollar sign there but it's a floating dollar sign it floats right up against the numbers uh, if I go up here on the other hand and I choose accounting uh, I get the dollar signs out here and that's really the only difference between currency and accounting is whether the dollar sign floats in or whether it stays out here on the left edge of the cell so remember what we did over here on these two rows was we use this so this is basically just another name for accounting and if you pause the mouse over it it does say accounting number format okay let's undo that so we're back to our percents here again and let's take a look at um, what else have we got here uh, we've got some options for dates that we're not going to look at right now we'll look at those in a future video uh, time will be included when we start to talk about dates uh, we've got some other things down here that we're not going to worry about and percentage is what we've already got here now if you want to customize a little bit and you don't want one of these defaults here let's just click off of the menu you can go to the dialog box launcher down here click on it and it will take you to the format cells text box and this basically has all of the categories that we saw up here but you've got some options over here for controlling the number of decimal places as well if we start with general uh, we don't get anything but if you go to number you can control the number of decimal places you can tell whether you want a comma or not uh, you can uh, indicate whether the negative numbers should have a minus sign parentheses or just be displayed in red or have parentheses and red and as you go down the list here you can see uh, there are a bunch of options for each different category over here on the left and we've got a couple of special ones down here for doing some things like zip codes and phone numbers and social security numbers and there are some custom options here and if you take a look at the custom options um, and if you study these a little bit we're not going to go into them right now but if you study them you can kind of see um, the pound sign is a placeholder for a digit um, for an optional digit the zero is a place number for a required digit so this means that it will show at least one digit um, but uh, if it's only a one digit number if it's more than that uh, we'll uh, get a comma if the number is larger than a thousand and then a bunch of other options down here and uh, these come in handy sometime uh, sometimes you, know, you need to go in and edit them yourself so if I click on this you know I could go up here and edit this by one of three decimal places I could just add a zero on the end and, and so on uh, so let's uh, click on okay there's some other stuff here but these are not really for numbers these are other features of formatting cells so we'll just click on cancel here and you can also get to that dialog box by going up here and clicking on more number formats it brings up the same thing and that is pretty much uh, I think everything all the basics that you need to know about formatting numbers in Excel 2016